The question states that consider the following syntax directed translation scheme that is SDTS with non terminals as S and A and terminals and as A and B. You are given the three productions. Now using the above syntax directed translation scheme, the output printed by a top or bottom up parser for the input AAB is you have to specify what would be the output that a bottom up parser would produce when it is given the input as AAB. Okay, now what is a bottom up parser? You need to understand and remember this and how it parses a string. It is very important in this type of questions. So a bottom up parser basically does the parsing in the reverse order of the rightmost derivation. So an important point to remember for bottom up parser is it does the parsing in reverse of rightmost derivation. I'll just explain it to you in a while. What does this mean? Rightmost derivation. So basically, if we start deriving a string like AAB from the given productions, then actually what a bottom up parser would do, it would start from the last step and derive all the steps one by one to reach the starting symbol. Usually a top down parser starts from the starting symbol to reach the final string but a bottom up parser starts from the string to reach the start symbol. So to generate AAB how would you write it? You would generate it using S using the production S goes to AA. Now if you use this production generally one is printed okay print one. I am not saying here that bottom up parser would do it in this manner but if you just derive AAB from the starting symbol print one the statement would be executed. Now if I replace this capital A with the production SB so it becomes A followed by SB and in this case the statement print 3 would be executed and replacing S by the second production S goes to A I get AAB and I derive my required string and 2 is printed or the statement print 2 is executed. Now when a bottom up parser works it would work in this direction. It would first print or execute this statement. It would print 2 then it would print 3 and then it would print 1. And why is it so? Because it starts from AAB it then replace it uses the production s goes to a to derive this sem this intermediate form of a s b and at since it has the bottom up parser has derived this intermediate form using the production s goes to a this so it will print two here okay now using this form it will derive another intermediate form of A followed by capital A and what production it will use during this A goes to SB and using this production it will print A goes to SB 3 okay now from A followed by capital A it would derive the final starting symbol S using the production S goes to AA that means since S goes to AA, it has replaced AA by S. Similarly, here SB was replaced by A. Okay, so since this production corresponds to the statement 1, print 1, 1 would be printed by the bottom up parser. So 2, 3, 1. The correct answer or the option is C. Alright, so regarding bottom up parser, please remember that. Uh, a part or uh, just opposite to the top down parser a bottom up parser does the parsing in reverse of rightmost derivation so as you can see here rightmost derivation is that at every point we are replacing or substituting the rightmost non-terminal 
to generate the next intermediate form here a is the rightmost non-terminal here in this case s is the rightmost non-terminal so it is rightmost derivation but performed in reverse order by the bottom-up parser okay now coming to the second question the second question asks you to match the two columns p q r s with one two three four these are the two lists that you have to match so the options are lexical analysis top-down parsing semantic analysis and runtime environment and the second list is leftmost derivation type checking regular expression and activation records okay so if you read both the lists very carefully you will find out that uh, lexical analysis is basically related to identifying or using regular expressions to identify certain keywords or identifiers okay so lexical analysis basically uses regular expression the lexical analysis phase of the compiler uses regets to identify different identifiers or to recognize various keywords and identifiers okay so this is one point now coming to the second part top down parsing top down parsing uses leftmost derivation to generate the string that belongs to any particular language so in this case top down parsing uses i'll write it down here top down parsing uses leftmost derivation unlike bottom up parsing okay now third point is semantic analysis semantic analysis basically uh, has a part or type checking is done in in the semantic analysis phase of the compiler so the option type checking would match to semantic analysis because type checking is a function that is carried out in semantic analysis so type checking is done at the semantic analysis phase of the compiler semantic analysis phase of the compiler now the last is runtime environment runtime environment matches to the last option which is activation record because an activation record is created for every function that are loaded into the stack at the runtime or a uh, you can say activation records of a function are itself loaded into the stack at the runtime so every time you run a function all the parameters and all the details that are related to the function are loaded into a stack and that stack is used while the function is being uh, run or it is being executed okay so the correct option would be p matches to the option three regular expression so i think b would be the right answer we'll check q matches to top down parsing is leftmost derivation one yes r semantic analysis matches to type checking and the last option check matches to activation record so b is the correct answer so this was a little easy question but in the previous question you have to remember certain points that i told you consider the following grammar and the grammar is given to you and we have to find out what is the follow of q now the formula for follow is uh, we look for the symbol whose follow we have to find out and we find where the symbol is present in the right hand side of the given grammar and after finding the place of this symbol we find the first of the symbols that are present to the right or in this case since the production in which q is present on the right hand side is x q r and s so first we'll find the to find the follow of q we'll find the first of 
R and first of R is W or epsilon. Alright, first of R is either W or epsilon. So in follow of Q, we will get a value W but we cannot write epsilon in follow. We will substitute this value in this case. So if we substitute epsilon in place of R here, we get so in this case Q is followed by S. So the follow of Q will also include the first of S. Now what is the first of S? First of S is Y. Therefore the follow of Q will have W and the first of S which is Y. So that is the correct answer which is given by part C. We only found out how we have to find the follow of Q. Uh, to find the follow of Q we first found the follow of R. In R since there was epsilon we, all, we substituted this value and also found out the first of S. So this gives us the answer to be W comma Y. Alright. Now coming to the next question, the question says that we have to match the following according to the input from the left column to the compiler phase in the right column and we are given two lists. The first list has syntax tree, character stream, intermediate representation and token stream as the options and the second has all these different options. These are the analyzers or the code generator that is used in a compiler or that are part of a compiler and these are the uh, majorly the inputs that are provided to these parts of the compiler. So if we remember the way a compiler is uh, integrated together and how it works you will uh, find out that actually we provide a character stream to the compiler initially to the compiler I mean to the lexical analyzer first it is provided to the lexical analyzer the lexical analyzer then generates a token stream this token stream is later provided to the syntax analyzer the syntax analyzer takes this token stream and generates syntax trees. These syntax trees serve as an input to semantic analyzer. And semantic analyzer generates intermediate representation intermediate representation which in case is used by the code generator all right so this is how a compiler functions and these are the major parts of a compiler that I have specified in different boxes and these are the inputs that are provided to each part or each phase of the compiler all right so matching these options we get the Syntax tree acts as an input to the semantic analyzer. So P would be matched with 3. Then character stream acts as an input to lexical analyzer. So Q would be matched with 4 and R with I. That means intermediate code generator with code gen intermediate representation with code generator and S with 3. Token stream with semantic analyzer. Perfectly correct so c is the correct answer for us so in this case if you remember the formula here and you remember the basics of the compiler how it functions and how inputs are taken by different phases and parts of the compiler you'll have no problem in solving the question so that's all for today's lecture stay tuned to easy engineering classes for more lectures on previous year gate computer science it papers and ugc net papers for a preparation on different uh, computer science exams and as well as bank it officer exams if you like the video share it with your friends give it a thumbs up and comment that uh, what portion did you understand and what part was a little tricky for you Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned to our channel and subscribe to our channel for notifications on other up
upcoming videos thank you